I don't think it's even on. Okay. Well, thank you yeah. for coming to the Leland Library for our Feast of Winter Infant Tot event with Liz Barber. Liz built a cooking career in a variety of Boston security and restaurant settings. And after starting her family, she re-entered re the food world as a cooking instructor. She's a regular guest on New Hampshire's WMUR Cook Corner. And her cooking demos and recipes are featured in various publications. She recently published her own cookbook, Beautifully Delicious, Cooking with Herbs and Edible Flowers. And we are very excited <coughs> to have her here tonight to teach us how to use our instant pot. So please join me in welcoming Liz Barber. Thank you. So what that bio did not mention is that my husband and I started out in Framingham and I worked at Caraways. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So when I left Boston, where I got my initial training, I went to Caraways for, for maybe a year. Yeah. Yep. Yes. I, I think it was, it was just a comfortable place to be. And um, I recently was doing a program, and um, Diane, who used to own, part owner, said, do you remember me? And she looked exactly as she did when I knew her uh, over 25 years ago. So um, it was nice to bump into her. Um, and anyway, so after that, then I went out to Maynard and worked at um, Grappa, if you're familiar with that, and then into um, Newton Highlands at Baker's Best. So those were the main places that I had gotten my training. Um, and then when we moved to New Hampshire, we waited, I waited like five years. And I said to my husband, do not tell anybody that I am a chef. <laughs> and he said, why not? And I said, we'll never get invited to dinner. <laughs> and we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I came out and started, then, you know, some of those invitations dried up. And I was just said to people, you could make me a peanut butter sandwich, and I would love it because I didn't put the peanut butter on the bread, you know. So um, anyway, it's, it's been a really wonderful transition over the years to be to doing this. And so I now, um, I used to cater myself. Um, my programs, um, my, and when I was catering, it featured uh, really herbs and edible flowers, which is where I came up with the idea for the cookbook, Beautifully Delicious Cooking with Herbs and Edible Flowers. So this I did, um, uh, came out last year, and I've been um, offering them. They're, it's only available at my cooking demonstrations. And so the book is full of information about herbs and edible flowers. Um, and if you're interested, I um, actually live in Hollis, New Hampshire, which is right next to Nashua. It's an hour drive. Uh, in the oldest house in Hollis, built in 1744, right on the common, on a third of an acre. They're all edible gardens, and I actually, even on my way here, I was saying I stopped at Market Basket because Market Basket's south of Nashua, New Hampshire, have better plants, I think. So I picked up a load of that, and um, so I'm planting my gardens now for my open garden tour on June 24th, and you're all welcome to come. There's no charge. It's a Sunday. Uh, the information is on my website, and that is on the recipes, which you can um, get at the end of class if you haven't already gotten them. You don't need them to follow along. Um, and um, it's on the same day that our women's club holds the Strawberry Festival right across the street, so you can go get strawberry shortcake. You can tour my edible gardens. Um, the whole property is full of edible plants. I just now am working on a separate tea garden, so it will be all herbs that you would use in teas. I just went to my favorite tea shop and picked up uh, green tea that I will be using as a base for uh, tea blends, and I'll be serving one of those at the, at the um, open garden. So that information, again, is on my website. And you can add your name to my email list. I only send out emails you know, every once in a while just with an updated schedule. I am often in this area. I was saying I definitely once... Uh, a year go to the Sudbury Library, um, Weston, uh, Framingham. I'm all over the place. And if you are a member of a garden club or another organization that has speakers, whether it's a DAR, Historical Society, or anything like that, if you work for a company that has a wellness group, I also speak to those. If you're a part, if you, if you teach and you have a wellness committee, um, I do this at schools. 
So go to my website and all that information is there. But in the cookbook you'll see lots of beautiful pictures of the different um, recipes that I've created that feature herbs and edible flowers um, and things that you can very easily replicate. And um, many of the picture of the recipes has step-by-step by, step by step instruction. So um, lots of information here. And many of the recipes also I've done variations on them so that you can take the leftovers of this um, Alfredo dish, herb Alfredo, for example, and with the leftovers, just by adding a few extra things, you come up with a completely different recipe. Because I know most of us are cooking for one or two people, and then what do you do with the leftovers every time? So here's something to help you make it into a different dish that's um, interesting as well. Um, so the books are $35, and I'm happy to sign them for you. Um, and you can give me cash or check or credit card. I'll take your money any way you want to give it to me. So don't be shy. So here we go on the Instant Pot, okay? Um, now I know you have a lot of questions and I'm happy to take them as we go along. I will tell you that what I need to do first is I need to get this food going. Because the big um, thing I need to clarify with the Instant Pot is that it's not instant. Okay? so. <laughs> Things do take time, and we'll talk about where the time can vary in the cooking process, but things do take time. So what I have going on here already is we're going to do, um, th I have three Instant Pots, three pots here, two Instant Pots and one Mueller. They all do the same thing. They are electric pressure cookers. What does that mean? That means that they are, um, they, they, Produce in the same way that your mother's old pressure cooker that put on the stove did, in that it's got what's inside needs to be sealed completely so that when you heat it with some form of water or liquid, the what's inside the pot needs to reach a certain pressure, a certain temperature for it to. Um, Get, be at high pressure to actually do its magic. And you've got that little bobber thing up on the top that when, you know, when it's on the stove, it goes, and, and that's the scary thing. It's like, what's going to happen? Because I know it's not supposed to do that. I'm supposed to get it to a point where that actually stops, right? So with the one, with the uh, traditional pressure cooker, you're always kind of looking at the, the, the heat underneath and you're trying to adjust it so that once it reaches the pressure it just stays there and doesn't go psh, 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 psh. because when it does that the pressure is too high and this valve is trying to release the pressure right so you need to get it to a point where it's at pressure but it just stays there and there's a lot of variables for that and it's um, that's what scares us right you can never leave the room with that you know and you're always on edge so um, although my brother-in-law's um, mother, they're Italian and um, from Italy, and she cooked every meal in her pressure. She had multiple pressure cookers. She did everything. So you can become very comfortable with that as well. Um, however, with this, um, with the pressure cookers, the, the Instant Pots having come to be um, designed for the rest of us who are a little nervous about it, um, these machines... They do it all by computerized. You know, it's got, they've got all the cooking built in there. It is amazing. It's not scary anymore. And it's really kind of set it and forget it. And you can actually walk away. You can actually delay time it so that you can set this up in the morning, put it on a delay time for like six hours from now. I want you to start cooking. And it will turn on and it will cook even while you're not in the house. Okay, so that's. That's how far it's come, all right? So let's, let me just get right into what I'm doing here. So already you he see something's cooking. So I am going to cook for you some uh, chickpeas. One of the great things that the pressure cooker, uh, the Instant Pot is good for, is for cooking beans from dry, right? So many of you have done this already, but many of us are kind of stuck at this level. It's like, well, I'm going to do the few things that I know take longer on the stove. I'll cook the peas or the, the beans from dry, and I'll cook my, um, my rice and all of that. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you um, on to the next level. So I just want to, um, I need to get a little bit more water. So excuse me for one second. Actually, yeah, um, as, as hot as you can get it, I need about a cup. So, um, okay, so cooking the beans. So these were dry chickpeas. So why I would, what I was doing here is, all right, let me step back. So the, the, heating this up, the, vari the variables to getting this to pressure. So when we cook our instant um, pot recipes, on your recipe it will say, cook at high um, pressure for 15 minutes. That will never change if you do that recipe, either double the recipe or start the meat frozen. That high pressure cooking period of time will never change. What will change, what you can influence, oh, ooh, that's really hot, thank you. What you can influence is the amount of time that it takes to get to pressure, okay? So what's happening is, is right now, um, I am pre-cooking these beans a little bit so that they're not completely dry. Okay, so if I were to throw these beans in completely dry with my water at room temperature and my spices, what am I throwing in here? I'm going to throw in two sprigs of rosemary. I'm going to throw in some garlic, okay, just to flavor them up, all right? And, um, and this is one of the recipes I'm, I'm giving you. And um, any of the recipes for the Instant Pot for the basics you can find. Um, there is an application, an Instant Pot application for your phone or your iPad that you can be using. I'm just slicing some garlic in here. Okay. And, um, or if, you, if you're a Facebook person, there are a million and one Facebook um, pages for Instant Pot. I'm just going to add some salt. I know that a lot of um, recipes say don't salt your beans before you cook them. Um, I do it every time and I never have a problem with them absorbing the water or anything like that. It just makes them taste better. So um, anyway, but I've given you this recipe because it is so good um, because it's got the spices in there and everything. And then I'm going to add some dry bay leaves. So by heating up these, partially cooking. Now, uh, when you cook beans at home, you might soak them overnight, right? Or you could take boiling water and pour it over them and let them sit for an hour. Essentially, that's what I've just done, okay? I put my water in, I put my beans in, and I turned this on saute, which will then heat up the water and cook it. So it's like I'm sauteing on the stove. I'm bringing it to a boil and letting it sit. So I've just kind of infused some water into these already. So what I've done now is not only have I gotten the water hot, which cuts down on the time it takes to get this to pressure, but I've also partially cooked the beans a little bit. So that will help me out with my time too. So this particular recipe calls for the beans to be at high pressure for 45 minutes, but it will take about on average 10 to 15 minutes to reach that high pressure, right? So that's about an hour. And then once you cook it for the 45 minutes, you need to either release the pressure immediately or let it naturally release, which means essentially just let the machine turn off, walk away from it, let it sit for 10 minutes, and very slowly the pressure will go down on its own. But that's still another 10 minutes to the one hour you already have. So hopefully what I've done here is I've, I've cut off about 10 minutes of time. We'll see if that's work, if that's true. Okay, so now this is the Mueller, which is a German brand. I wanted to buy a brand that was not um, Instant Pot, just for the heck of it, because not everybody has an Instant Pot. So, so someone, you, did you come up to me? You don't have an Instant Pot. Anyone else not have an Instant Pot? Oh, okay. Do you, is it just that you have another brand? I don't have anything yet. Oh, okay, 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 good. Oh, good, perfect, okay. So let me just get this started. So here, uh, it, the, the lid is on. I've got it sealed. I need to put it at airtight in order for this to reach pressure. Now, 
here's a, one of those differences between Instant Pot and this pot, depending on the level that you buy. If you look at the Instant Pot uh, opportunities, there are many different types of Instant Pots, not only varying in size, but what they do. And I believe there is a, a, uh, a, um, a model that will actually self-seal um, on airtight always to start. The rest of us who just get the regular ones, we have to remember to put it on airtight. So that's what I've done. Now, um, each of these have presets, OK? The preset is um, what the company determines is the average time that it should take to cook that particular item. So in this case, Mueller, and if I cycle through, and the, the way that you cycle through the menus is very different. So let me just start right off the bat. When you get this home, you open the box, you sit down, and you read the manual. Oh. I'm not one of those girls. But you have to, because they're different, and there are subtleties in there that will save you frustration. OK? Hopefully, I'll be doing a lot of that, too. So here we're going to, it's on, and I'm going to cycle through to the um, bean setting. And if it's not at 45, I'm going to adjust it. So it's at 40, so I'm going to adjust it up to 45 minutes and hit start. Okay, so. What's happening now is it's reaching pressure. So you'll see it's kind of spinning here. On the Instant Pots, it, it does a similar thing. It says on, OK? Once, once it reaches that high pressure point, so regular boiling water boils at 212 degrees. When this is under high pressure, it reaches up to 245, 250 depending on the machine, it could go a little bit higher. So with temperatures that high, that's where all the magic happens because it can break through tough cuts of meat. It can cook beans much more evenly. Um, all of the food that you prepare is going to be more flavorful because nothing is escaping. We're not losing steam. None of those good nutrients are leaving, nor are they evaporating. The, 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 the scent, the smell of the spices, herbs, they're all staying right in there. Plus, we are always cooking, always, in a moist environment. You cannot use this without water or moisture that's created or that comes from the ingredients that you put inside. It has to be at a minimum of one cup of liquid. Okay, so the beans, I made two cups of beans and they're in um, four cups of water. Okay, so um, beans are dry. I can't just put them in dry and expect them to cook. They have to have moisture in it and it's got to have enough moisture in it so that it, cont it stays moist. It has moist enough water for the beans to absorb but also enough water to hold the pressure. You need to have the water to hold the pressure. So that's what we're doing. Now, do you see the little bit of steam coming up here? OK, this is one of those things that if you're new, you're going to turn yours on, and you're going to be like, w w why is it doing that? I must not have sealed it right. It shouldn't do that. It does that as it's almost reaching pressure. Now, you see how quick that's happened? Because I put really hot water in there, right? I was cooking those beans. It's very hot in there, so it takes very little time for that to reach that high pressure. All right, so it's, it'll take another a couple minutes maybe. So what this is, is on every one of these guys is this little pressure button. Can you see it? It's, it's easier to see on this one. Can you see my pink button here? So right now, it's, the pressure is not, it's not full pressure. And so with the button down, it um, allows some of that steam to escape. Once it reaches high pressure, this pops up and it seals it off completely. So in just a few minutes, this will seal completely and then this will stop. So this is the first thing when I did it that I was like, oh, I did something wrong. Okay? If that's the case, just remember, look, am I on airtight? 
did this seal closed. Once this reach, reaches high pressure, you cannot, <coughs> you cannot open this, and you should not attempt to open this, okay, until the pressure is out. That's another thing to remember. That's a big thing to remember, okay? Now, you should, in just a minute or so, you're going to see this start to count down. So remember, we set it for 45 minutes. It will start counting down, 44, 43. Once it starts to do that, we know it's reached high pressure. It's in that mode. It's on its way. OK? So already, you've learned some really important lessons. Read your manual. It could be like a one glass of wine read, or it could be two glasses. It's up to you. But you want to sit down and you want to read it. And then it has you running through how to make rice first, or boil water first, or whatever. Just do it. Because the more you do it, the more confidence you'll build. OK? That beeped. Let me know. It should start counting. I can't see it. So it's there we go. On our way. I've already done one thing right. OK? So. That's the first thing that we're doing, all right? Now, the second thing we're doing is I'm going to do um, a chicken dish for you. And this is the great thing that this does, is it turns, as I mentioned to you, the flavors for the food are so intense uh, if you have a good recipe. Um, and the recipe that I've given you comes from my favorite um, Instant Pot chef. Her name is um, Yervashi Petri. And, you have this. I've given you these resources, information. This book is on it. Her website is on it, along with others for you. Okay, so I'm not leaving you in the dark. You don't have to worry about missing that information. So she, not only does she have a section on things to know about your Instant Pot, but she's also, you'll notice it's called the Keto Instant. So she's really big into low carb eating, which my husband and I have been doing now for almost a year. And it's been great. I lost 20 pounds. I feel amazing. And it's so much better than I ever thought it would be. So I've also included, because a lot of people at the end of my demonstrations ask me about this, the idea of going low carb and how can you do it, um, because it, they're finding that it is um, um, helpful with um, sleep problems, inflammation, uh, type 2 diabetics are off their meds. Um, you know, so many things. So that information is there for you too. Okay, so we're gonna, this, this chicken recipe is from her book, so I need to get it started because it's gonna take a little bit of time, but we're gonna learn a few lessons along the way in, on this one too. So first thing is, is when you are using your Instant Pot, it's really good for cuts of meat or chicken that have a lot of fat in them. Okay, leave the fat. Okay, fat now, thank God they're telling us it is actually very good for you. And um, because if you think about it, when they cut out the fat in our food pyramid, they put it way up here in 1980, we were all supposed to get thin and somehow we all got fat. Because we were never satisfied, so we just kept eating. And we, and we ate all these grains and carbohydrates down here, which are the biggest part of our meals. So the fat is gonna help you to be more satisfied. And amazingly, it adds flavor to what you're eating. So that's an important part of cooking in, in um, your food, OK? So I use chicken thighs. I find them to be more flavorful than chicken breast. You can use chicken breast if you like. That's up to you. And today, for the demonstration, I'm using boneless because I didn't want to cut through the bones, OK? But you can use bone in. Does it matter in the cooking time? No, because remember, what matters, what's going to change, is the amount of time it takes to get this heated up, right? And when we cook like a whole chicken versus a boneless chicken, whole chickens always take more time, right? Because you've also got to heat the bones. So that's why it would take more time. So, you know, you can do one way or the other, but bones always add more flavor, okay? Because there's a lot of good stuff in there. So here are my boneless, skinless thighs. Then we're going to add some spices. So. We're going to add um, some uh, chili powder. This is not a spicy chili powder, OK? It's not cayenne. Um, I've already mixed some in here. I'm going to add a little bit more. Um, and I also, um, I need to confess, in uh, my hurrying of getting out, I forgot one of my favorite ingredients, which is the cumin. I know. <laughs> 
No, but what I happened to have in my bag instead was smoky paprika, oh, yeah. which is my favorite. So we'll see how we like it. I think we're going to be fine. And I think because the food is free, you have no right to complain. <laughs> so, uh, and then we're going to add in some salt, okay, because we need some salt in there. Okay, so we have those things. And now what we need to do is at home, you're going to use ground cumin. Okay, and you'll, you'll, you'll definitely taste the difference, but you could then say, you know what, maybe I'm going to use that smoky, smoky paprika and the chili. I'll cut one, I'll cut the chili in half and, you know, add that paprika and the cumin. I mean, this is the beauty of cooking is that you, you can make those changes, okay. Um, so what I'm doing here is just getting it on all of the meat, all right. Now. When you cook with spices, and this is a general cooking uh, bit of information, these are dried spices. So you need to heat them in order for their best flavor, to help their flavor bloom. So if we were at home and we were cooking on the stovetop and we were going to make um, this dish, for example, um, this dish calls for an onion and I'm going to cut that up and put it in. I might saute my onions first and then I might on the stove top. Yeah, forget this guy. Um, and then I would add my spices to heat them up and, and bring out their flavor. Then add my chicken and the rest of the things. That's what I would do on the stove. So we need to do a similar thing in here. Remember that our Instant Pot has that saute mode, okay, which a um, slow cooker does not. Okay, so here's our difference, okay. Now, this must always be in your Instant Pot. You can never cook in this. There are plenty of stories of people who do because they're not thinking. Maybe they've already had their third glass of wine and they're just like, wow, this is great. Okay, but it, it, it gets hot from the bottom, okay? And you see there's a, that's the heating element on the bottom. Okay, that's where the heat comes from, whereas a crock pot heats from the bottom and the sides, okay? So this heats from the bottom. Now this is important to know because that allows us to do our searing, okay? So um, I'm going to turn this um, it's, uh, on because the light is here, the electricity is here, and I'm going to go to um, saute. Now this automatically, this is an Instant Pot now, okay? So Instant Pot will automatically always start on high, whether it's high heat um, for the searing or high pressure. You don't have to worry about low pressure versus high pressure. So, um, so now it's going to heat from the bottom. And so I'm going to go ahead and add my olive oil in. Again, this is just as if I were cooking this on the stove. We do the same kind of thing. Okay. So with the pressure cooker, because it heats the hottest point even now, while this is on, the hottest point is coming up from the bottom. We want to put the ingredients on the bottom that will take the longest to cook, okay? So in this recipe, so at home, if I were cooking on my stovetop in a saute pan, I would saute up my onions. They're going in first. And then I would add my chicken on top and my rest of my things, and then I would cover it because I want to almost protect the chicken. In this case, it's, it's different. You know, we're going to, I don't want to burn the onions, you know, so we're going to go ahead and sear our chicken. And then the way that she writes her recipes, she just has you just putting the other things right on top. And then remember, there's a lot of stuff happening inside here once we get it under pressure that it's all mixing together and the flavors will all come out beautifully. Okay? So, just getting that hot, and it'll take a minute or so, and I can feel it starting to, to do that. Then um, I'm going to sear this off just to the point here is to bloom the flavors of the spices. What's interesting, and I highly recommend that if, you, if, you are, if you're a good uh, video watcher, watch her videos on her website called Two Sleevers. She has many, many videos. Now, she is a professional statistician. 
And so she's in the corporate world, and so she gets it that video should only be about five to seven minutes because otherwise we're like, I'm done. I can't sit here for 20 minutes and watch this video. So she is very to the point, and you learn a lot from her videos. So I always recommend her videos, okay? Um, so uh, the next ingredients that are going to go in, we have um, our onion. So I'm going to... Um, Get that ready. We're going to do, uh, we have a can of um, diced tomatoes. Okay, you could use diced or whole plum. It really doesn't matter. The whole can is going to go in. Now, this is the liquid, the main liquid for this ingredient. I'm not adding water to this because the water will only water down the flavor. But let me tell you, this chicken is going to produce a lot of liquid, right? So, and because I'm not watering down, the flavor will be much more intense, right? So it's, so you see how I can sear this, right? You can hear that. So um, the intense flavor is, again, one of the beautiful things about the Instant Pot, and that is, um, you know, due to the, the, the way this cooks, the way it keeps the flavors in, all of that. Um, and then it will really, force these wonderful flavors from the items that we're cooking. Okay? So, let me just get these in. So, I've got the whole bottom covered and then as they heat, I'll add these other ones in. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, um, oh, okay, so we know that we cannot do anything in here without that inner pot. The inner pots clean so amazingly easy. So you'll be really happy about that. Um, you'll ne you should never struggle with those. And, and here's another thing to know about these, um, the Instant Pot in particular. Um, if these start, say I didn't put in enough water or something happened and they start to scorch on the bottom, this will shut off. It will not let it burn. So you're going to say, wait a minute. It's not cooking. If that's the case, something's going on inside that's not supposed to be happening. So you do need to investigate. You need to let out the pressure with the escape valve, all of that, and, and then take it apart and see what happened. D did I just run out of water? That could happen. So you got to put some more in. How, why would that happen? Uh, it could be because I forgot to seal this. And while it was heating up, it just kept releasing water, right? Or do you notice how um, I asked for more water for the beans? Well, the lid was off and they were steaming and I, I lost more water, so I needed to add, it, add some to it. So you can always, you can most often recover. So that's another thing. And remember, you're alone in the kitchen. Who's going to know, right? I mean, that's, that's, I make a lot of mistakes, okay? All right, so. The other thing is, is the ceiling ring. You cannot use this without the ceiling ring. You have to have it. It comes with your pot. I do recommend that you order another set because um, a dish like this has a lot of spices in it. This will absorb the spice scent and it will impart it on other things if you can't get that out. Can you get it out? Sure. I throw it in the dishwasher. I can even throw this in the dishwasher, by the way. Um, I always wash it, you know, afterwards with soap and water. I've also soaked it in water with vinegar, and it has removed the scent, too. But um, I also make cheesecakes in here, and I don't want the cheesecakes to, you know, get... So I have, you can buy them colored, so I have colored ones that are for making sweet things or things that you don't want flavored at all, right? So there is this metal piece around here that this um, goes, sneaks right in under. So it's pretty easy to take in, uh, to, to put in and to take out, okay? But it has to be around here. Now this, if you don't get it in right, it could be one of the reasons why you have a problem because it won't seal if this isn't incorrectly, okay? Now, um, by the way, this thing comes off to clean 
Okay, and then you put it back on. This button, um, this also pops, this thing pops out. You can clean it. So you want to keep an eye on that. If you have um, something that's, um, you know, sometimes things get up in there. So you want to take a tooth, I always have a toothbrush at the sink and I always, you know, can give it a little scrub. I'm just turning over this chicken and adding my last few pieces and then we're ready to move on with this recipe. So I just, again, I'm just browning this. Now what's interesting to me is in watching um, the, the recipes from this um, cookbook author, she has one of her videos that talks about uh, not needing to sear your meat. So here's, you know, you have a great um, beef stew recipe that you make in your crock pot that you love. And what do you have to do? You have to flour the meat, season it, and then you got to sear it on the stove, and then you throw it in the crock pot with everything, a uh, couple cups of water, get it going, right? She says you don't need to do that step because of the chemical reaction that happens in an instant pot, in a pressure cooker. So right there you're saving yourself a bunch of time. The other thing is, is the reason we flour the meat when we do, uh, when we pre-sear it for a beef stew is because that flour will then thicken up the sauce, right? You don't want to do that in a pressure cooker because if it splatters up, it could clog this stuff up and then it won't function correctly. So you don't want to be thickening, pre-thickening recipes in here. That's for after. So say this recipe does need to be thickened at the end. I take it, I turn it, you know, it goes off. I let it naturally release. I open it up. I get my flour, my butter mixed, or my cornstarch and my water all set. And then I turn this on to saute. Starts to bubble. I add in my thickener. I get to watch it, season it, boom, it's done. So you do it on the back end, not on the front end. Okay? All right. So now we've got, can you smell those wonderful smells? So let's get the rest of those, um, of our ingredients in here so we can get this under pressure. So um, she has 14 ounces of our tomato, and in that goes. Okay? And then we have um, five ounce can of tomato paste. I love her recipes because this is the only recipe I've ever had that actually uses the whole can. Is that like the most frustrating thing? Because you know, any recipe calls for two tablespoons of tomato paste and then it sits in there in the fridge. Uh, you, you never remember you have it there. You don't use it enough anyway and then you look at it and then you're like, ah, is it good? I don't think so. So um, you paid for just two tablespoons. I get the paste in the tube, except for this recipe, when I'm more than happy to buy can after can after can, because I know I'm going to use them all. OK. Why did you um, saute or, or brown the chicken? Just because of the spices? To bloom the spices, yes. Yeah. OK. So in that went. And then we have um, a, an onion chopped. Okay, so here is one demonstration uh, I'm going to um, show you. Whoops. Now, I can turn off the saute, right, because I did the saute thing. So I'm just going to step away and do this demonstration. You ready? Because this will change your life, but this will really change your life. Because you're going to use onions more often than you're going to use an Instant Pot. Okay, so pay attention. All right? So here we go. Sharp knife, all right? I'm actually going to pass a sharp knife around because I think so many of us don't sharpen our knives and we don't really know what a sharp knife feels like. And here's where it becomes very important. If you're chopping herbs or you're chopping an onion, for example, um, food tastes better when you cut through it more cleanly. So uh, with an onion, right now if I passed around, you guys could smell it and um, it wouldn't smell like anything and you wouldn't cry. It's not until we cut into it that we release the gases 
that it causes us to tear up, okay? So if I'm using a dull knife and I'm cutting through my onion, and really what it's doing is it's mashing the onion because it's dull, I'm going to break many more cells and it's going to release many more gases and then the tearing is going to be dramatically more than if I have a sharp knife. Okay, so that's an important reason. Also when you chop your herbs, if you mash them, they become bitter, okay, as opposed to just being clean and fresh and, and full of flavor. So. When I pass this around, just pull your finger across the blade. Here, let me just give it a quick, quick sharp because I really want it to be sharp for you. Um, this is actually Cook's Illustrated's favorite chef's knife. If you're, if you're familiar with Cook's Illustrated or America's Test Kitchen, this is their favorite uh, knife, which is made by Victorinox, which is Swiss Army. Oh, that's cutting just a little bit. So, um, and it's funny, I, I don't, until I got my book, the only items that I was selling were the, the chef's knife, the sharpener, and that garlic slicer. And in the years that I've been doing this, I've sold over 800 of these. They stay sharp. When you sharpen them, they take an edge, and they keep that edge for a long time. So when you get the knife, pull your finger across. Don't pull it down like that. Have yet, I, I haven't had anyone cut themselves yet, so... Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut our onion. Okay, and um, I'm going to cut it from top to bottom. Typically, what do we do? We cut off the top, we struggle with the peel, we slice it, and then we chase those pieces all over the cutting board because we need to get them the same size so they cook in the same amount of time. So we're going to cut this from top to bottom. So I take my... Uh, my knife right through the center from top to bottom. Hold this in place, cut right through. Now I have plenty of surface area to pull the um, layer of skin right off. Okay, and, and that alone makes it that much easier because you're not struggling with that peel. And if you feel like you are, you know, again, just go down one layer. Okay, now I'm going to cut off the stem. I leave the root so that it holds the whole onion together. Okay, and then I take the tip of my knife because it's nice and sharp, and I cut down to the root without going through in um, nice, even slices, whether if you want this, um, if you want your pieces small, cut these nice and thin. If you want them to be thicker, you know, bigger pieces, cut them a little bit larger. Okay? And I'm done. I'm not chasing those all around the cutting board. Again, down to the root, cut through, nice and even, and then cross cut like that. And that's it. Okay, and then in this goes right in. Okay, and then um, we have our little pickled jalapenos. You can use more if you want. This is, these are not terribly spicy because there's a lot of sauce that's going to be created. So, and then I'm just barely combining. Let me just walk this around, just so you can see what's happening in there. Okay, not much. Okay, that's it. I mean, that's just, I've taken a lot of time to do this, but, you know, it won't take you a lot of time. Plus, you'll be drinking the whole time, so, you know. Nice glass of wine, perfect. Okay. Oh, swell. Wow. All right. Okay. Um, I'm just happy she survived it. That's fantastic. Okay. So now here comes, here comes the next big step to cooking in the Instant Pot. Are you ready? Called pot in pot cooking. So it'd be really nice. I could seal this up and then I've got one part of my meal. 
but wouldn't it be great if in the same container I can do two or three parts of the meal, the entire meal, in one without doing a chicken with rice and vegetables. That's, you might as well be cooking in your crock pot, right? So here's the magic. You need a trivet. Most of these Instant Pots come with a little trivet. Okay, so I, another confession. I forgot the trivets, the other trivets that come with these, but they come with handles. This is my egg trivet. So I hard boiled egg in, in these all the time. They're fantastic. The shells come right off. Another great reason to buy these if you're a hard boiled egg person. But what we need to do is I need to, I'm cooking something else on top of here. So this needs to go in so that the item I have will, you know, sit on top. So what do I have? Okay, so, so I forgot my cumin. I forgot those little carriers. Okay, and this is the biggest. I forgot the container to cook the rice in that I'm going to do in here. But you're going to be so impressed. This is a cute little steamer basket that I have lined with tin foil. And I'm putting my rice in. And I'm hoping it will cook. So instead, we need a little stainless steel bowl? Yes. Or yes. Or Anything that will fit in here that you can put in your oven. Yes. I had none of those things. So here we go. Remember this. The chicken needs the most amount of time to cook. The rice needs very little. So the higher the rice is off the bottom, the more time I've taken away. You know, it won't overcook. This well, the chicken needs to be at high pressure for 15 minutes. The rice is usually at high pressure for four minutes. By raising the rice up off the bottom, now the rice will cook in the 15 minutes without overcooking. So is there water in that? Yes. Yes. That's the magic of my invention, is that it's holding the water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's one cup of water to one cup of rice which is different than on the stove, right? Because there's a lot of steam in here that will add to it. This is why rice doesn't overcook in an Instant Pot, because it's not sitting in too much water. OK, now here's an Instant Pot, the difference. You ready? Wait. <gasps> Isn't that a nice sound? <laughs> the Instant Pot does that. The Mueller doesn't do that. The Instant Pot tells me. You're good to go. Put this on sealing. Now, we're going to go ahead and I'm turning off the saute. Let me just, we're going to do pressure. All right, turn that off. Cancel. OK. Pressure cook, 15. So here's another Instant Pot magic thing is it remembers <coughs> what I typically set it at. Okay. All right, so this is on. It's on high pressure because it always starts automatically at high pressure. This little keep warm button, that's a default. You could turn it off and it won't keep it warm when it's done. Keep warm doesn't cook. That was a big question that I always have in my classes, so, you know, it's been hard to get an answer for that. So what happens is this now is going to get to high pressure. OK, it should take about 10 minutes. Once it reaches high pressure, it's going to cook at high pressure for 15 minutes. All right? When it reaches the 15 minutes and it's done, we are doing a natural release, meaning I'm leaving it alone. What's different about these two now, and you'll see the timing is going to be very similar just because of when we started that. But what's going to happen here is that um, when this one is done, it will essentially go to warm. And I have to time in my head 10 minutes of natural release. This guy, the Instant Pot, because I have the warm light on, which is automatic, once it reaches high pressure and it's cooked for 15 minutes, it's done its full countdown, 
Then it'll go to low and it will count up 10 minutes. I have to turn it off, but at least I can look at the pot and say, ooh, it's been releasing now for 10 minutes. I can stop it. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Well, the right, it doesn't shut off. So here's what's happening. The chicken is cooking. The chicken takes 15 minutes to cook at high pressure. So that's why I put it at the bottom of the pot. The rice only takes four minutes on its own. So if I put the rice under the chicken, the rice would be way overcooked in 15 minutes, right? right. So instead, I'm lifting it up and putting it up as high as I can in the pot so that it's not getting as much heat as the chicken, so it'll take longer for this mm -hmm. to cook, right? So it will work out so that they are done at the same time, but only because I've elevated that. So let me give you another example. Say um, I wanted to cook um, my, my rice and some broccoli at the same time. Rice takes four minutes. Fresh broccoli takes two minutes. Which one do I put on top? The broccoli. Right. Okay, because it takes the least amount of time, so I want to get it up off the bottom. Okay? So if I'm making my beef stew, I love my family recipe of beef stew. It calls for four cups of water. Now I know, okay, I really only need one cup of water in here. So I'm going to cut the amount of water down in that beef stew to about one and a half, two cups. First thing I'm going to do is go on the internet and look at all the beef stew recipes and see, are they similar to mine? How much water do they use? How much tomato do they use? So I can kind of, in my head, figure that out. Now, if it calls for carrots to be cooked, I could certainly cook the carrots and the potatoes right in with the beef stew. But then they'd be like every other beef stew. They'd all, the carrots would take like, taste like beef stew, the potatoes would taste like beef stew. But I could make it taste even better by doing my beef stew at the bottom. I could take my carrots. Now the beef stew, say, takes 35 minutes, right? Because I'm using, you know, big chunks of chuck. So the carrots, I'll um, peel them, leave them whole, wrap them in tin foil, and just lay them on top of the beef stew as it's cooking. And then I'll do the same thing with my potatoes. Leave, cut them into pieces, put them in tin foil, lay them on top. So I've got those two little packets laid on top. By the time my beef stew is done, those have been cooking in this high pressure. They don't take nearly as much time as the other, but because they're wrapped up nice and tight, I've given them the opportunity to take, you know, they don't take the full amount of time, but the flavor is so intense. And then imagine wrapping, opening up those carrots that that beautiful orange, just stunning. Okay? So that's another way you're, that is pot in pot cooking, right? Because I've separated the ingredients out and I've stacked it in there. Now I've seen videos where people are cooking, um, you know, potatoes and then they're like, oh, you know what? I want to hard boil some eggs at the same time. So they just put the whole eggs in there at the same time. Now, one woman at my last program, I was talking about hard boiling eggs and how the shells just come off so beautifully. And she goes, oh, I don't even bother to, I don't do that. I said, what do you mean? She said, I take my, my, the container I would have brought if I remembered to bring it is this little metal round container that fits in beautifully. She opens all of her eggs out of the shells, puts them in there and just sets that in and cooks it. And I'm like, well, what are you making with that? She said, I'm making egg salad. When it's done, I just take it and I just chop them all up and I have egg salad. Well, she yeah. cracks the eggs and pours them into the... Into, the, into, into the a container oh. in the Instant Pot. You could even put it right in the Instant Pot. I could do my eggs right in the Instant Pot. I can make rice right in this Instant Pot. I don't have to put it into a container. The only reason I'm putting them into a container is because it lifts it up off the bottom and I'm adding other things too. Okay?
suddenly thirsty. Okay, let me go through a couple of these points. The last thing I'm going to get cooking is um, my cauliflower. Okay, so I am going to do something that um, most of us, you know, when we cook cauliflower, we take it and we um, are cutting it up into little florets. No, don't do that anymore. Just put it right in here. Okay. But remember I told you that um, one of the things I forgot was my little thing that has little handles in it. So here's, here's the thing about the Instant Pot. Just be prepared. Once you get it, you're going to go online, you're going to be like, Instant Pot accessories. Mm -hmm. And they all come up on Amazon. You're like, oh, I, I need to have one of those, and I should have five of those. And you're just going to keep on picking out the things you want. So remember that little steamer basket that I got? I got it that because it's just my husband and I, so it's easier to cook in something like that. These things, so this is the little trivet that came in the Mueller. Another reason why I don't recommend it, the trivets that came in the Instant Pots, they all have handles. So you can drop them in, put this on, and then lift them out of the Instant Pot. This, I got to... I got to find a way to pick this up without it all falling apart. So here is this little um, sling. You can do that. You know, you don't have to. You don't have to be a slave to the gadgets. So we'll see how that comes out. And I just put this in. I have how much cup of water? How much water do you think I have in here? Just a cup. Okay. So when it's done cooking, I'm just going to lift it out like that. I know. And then this just folds over because it won't seal if something's out here. All right? And we'll go ahead and we'll get that sealed up. Because the last class I forgot to do that. And I got all the way to the end of the class. And they're like, what about the cauliflower? And I'm like, oh, oh, swell. I forgot all about it. OK, so now here is another. So remember we talked about these two guys are going to be natural release. The natural release adds another 10 minutes or so to your cooking time, right? Um, so what about when do you use the quick release? You use that when you're cooking vegetables mostly, things that need to be out of there. You don't want to overcook them. So most all vegetables that are quick cooking vegetables are on the venting or the quick release, all right? But they have to be sealed, okay? The only time that you don't have to seal something, let me just, okay. So this is coming up. The last time I did this, it got a little stuck for some reason, so that's why I'm a little paranoid. But you can see how, remember, this hap it happened over here too, right? As it's coming to pressure, it's, you've got some steam in here, so I'm just making sure that it's, there we go. I had to give it a little jiggle. Sometimes you'll notice, geez, it's doing that for a long time. Just give it a little jiggle, like you do your car if something's not working. You give it a little kick, okay? And then make sure, and, and I'll check it again. All right, so... Um, where was I? The venting, right? Okay, so with this, we've got this in here with one cup of water. That's the minimum amount of water that needs to be in there, okay? We're going to go ahead and seal this up, okay? And then, now, your, um, your machines all come with general guides for cooking vegetables. So you can go off of here. And this is what they're telling you they've discovered is the average cooking time for this. So here, fresh cauliflower whole, they say six to eight minutes. I have found it's just too long. So it's up to you, okay, what it is that you want to do. Now, they do, um, they may have, depending on which um, model you get it it could have a vegetable button but that's pretty generic so i would think that you would just go ahead and choose your own number that works for you so we're going to go with four minutes on the cauliflower because i've done it at 
others and they still come out just a little bit mushy for me. So we're going to, um, we put it at pressure. Oops, I'm sorry. Um, where are we? It's hard to do this upside down, manual. And so this was at five minutes. We'll just do it at five minutes. That's what I did it last time. Okay, so this is on sealing, <coughs> five minutes, all set to go. Okay, so this came up to pressure by itself fine and it should be counting down soon. We're, what are we at here? Six. Six minutes. So then um, we're going to let it sit for ten minutes after that and then we'll release that and we'll have our beans. Now, um, here's the thing. Remember we talked about the three stages of the heating cycle, right? So to warm this up is the big variable for you. You can change that depending on how you've gotten your ingredients ready first. So in packing for my classes, I, I shop the day before and I pack my bags in the refrigerator because I have multiple classes in a week. So if I had refrigerated my can of tomatoes and my tomato paste and all of that, it would have taken much longer to heat this up, right? So can you do things from frozen? Absolutely. Uh, and a lot of people do. You could get all the ingredients ready for this and put it into a Ziploc bag or whatever, stick it in your freezer, and then on a day that you really want it quick, you could pop that in there. Something to remember though, the ingredients in the frozen state need to be able to fit in your thing. So, you know, make sure that, that you've thought that far ahead. You can't put in a big rack of ribs that are frozen. <laughs> you know, they have to be small. So, um, you can do that. You can put frozen meat in here, frozen chicken, frozen everything. But it'll take a long time to reach pressure. And then you just cook it at the 15 minutes. Okay, so that's all up to you, how you, how you want to prepare that, get that ready. Will it give you more moisture if it's frozen? Um, it shouldn't because that same amount of moisture is in there when you stick it in the freezer. Right. That's a good question because that affects other things. If I'm, if I'm thawing, it just seems wetter, right? But that wet now is going into the cooking. It's, it's getting blended in nicely, yeah. Okay? All right, so um, now, remember we were just talking about broccoli, if I were cooking broccoli in here with my rice. So another way that I could slow down the broccoli cooking time is to be using frozen broccoli, right? Or frozen peas will take longer to cook than fresh peas, you know, things like that. Um, I one evening did um, fish. So I did tilapia with um, cauliflower and peas. And I got it all to cook in the same amount of time. Now tilapia fish takes a, between two and three minutes in here. It doesn't take long at all. Because remember, to get up to pressure, you are heating the food inside. It is under heat. So that's included in the cooking time, ultimately. So um, what I did was, my cauliflower then, because it was going to be a much shorter amount of time, I cut the cauliflower into pieces so they cook, would cook faster. And then the peas, they cook in no time at all. And I cooked them all separately and then put them on the plate and everything was delicious. Okay, well seasoned. Um, fish in here is really good. As long as it's good from the beginning. Can't have an odor to it. You, you can't make bad fish taste good in here, right? <laughs> So you can't do that, okay? Um, so let me just, there are a couple of things I just want to make sure that I did um, cover. So, um, oh, okay. So the other thing I wanted to talk about are the presets, the buttons here. All right, so the Instant Pots, all right, let's just step back. These are three or six quart. This is an eight quart. Um, for my husband and I, because we like to have leftovers, the six quart is great. My son is home now for the three of us. Six quart still gives us leftovers. It's, enough, it's a good size to make 
one single recipe of any recipe I'm going to do. Okay? We're on. Okay. So um, if you're a larger family and you, you know, you might consider an eight quart. Um, I met a woman, she has four children. They have the eight quart and they have like a six quart because she does her vegetables separate. It's just how she, it works for her, right? Um, if you are two and you, you know, you want to check this out, you can do a three quart. I haven't experimented with that. And in her cookbook, she uses the six quart and she uses it as an instant pot. So here's the answer to your question. Do I buy an instant pot or what do I buy? So I can't recommend different brands to you other than I've only worked with these two. I prefer the instant pot. And part of the reason is, is that anytime I go to look up a recipe, it's Instant Pot. Everyone, oh, you know, and there are um, all these forums. They're called Instant Pot forums. You know, they're not necessarily called electric pressure cooker forums. So I'm assuming a lot of the recipes people are actually using Instant Pots. Okay, so they're, they're more common. This Christmas, Amazon sold 29,000, and they sold out. So, you know, it is the most common brand. Where you're going to get different, not only in the size, but there's the 7-in-1, the 9-in-1, the 10-in-1. What are all those? It's all the extra things that they can do, all right? So they're all going to do the basics. They're all, I believe all of them are going to saute. They're all going to, they, I, I'm pretty sure they all make um, yogurt. Um, but you want to check if, if you think you're going to make it. And I'll tell you, I never thought I would make it. And now my husband only wants yogurt from the Instant Pot. It's milder. And I can use my organic milk that I buy. And I can vary the cooking time so that I can make it um, thicker without removing the whey. So um, I, you know, the... The recipe book on the Instant Pot, the, um, the online feature says um, eight hours to cooking, but said you could try it for 10. I met a gentleman who says, I do it for 24, and I can stand a spoon in my yogurt when it's done. So I'm building up to there. I just did 12, and it was very good. So um, that is something to think about. Um, and it's easy. There's a yogurt button here, and the instructions tell you exactly what to do. You do have to do a, a scorch, uh, a boiling point part, mix in with the yogurt culture, and then you add your milk, and then you turn it on for, you know, 8, 10, 12 hours while you're in bed, while you're sleeping, and then you come down in the morning, your yogurt's done. So you may surprise yourself at how much you enjoy it, okay? Then there, okay, so here's where the buttons can vary. So we've talked about if there's a vegetable button it's pretty generic all right so you may not use it or you could use it I use it typically set at five minutes so you know I would have to adjust if it's over that but m a lot of vegetables do take five minutes right then we have the soup button on the instant pot that is it cooks it differently it heats it differently because traditionally um, clear broth soup or um, a broth or stock, you don't want to bring it to a rolling boil because it will make it cloudy. So the soup button will heat your, the initial heating will be slower to get to pressure so that it doesn't make it cloudy. So you may use it or you may not. It just depends on what you're doing. If I'm doing a soup that is going to be pureed anyway, you know, I could use the soup button, but I don't necessarily have to, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, the other one that's different, oh, there's a steam um, button, which you may say, you know what? I'm going to cook my vegetables under that because that raises the heat much faster so that it reaches pressure quicker and will be less likely to overcook your vegetables and then you do the quick release on it. So um, I will be um, learning how to do this steam. It's not something I've experimented with yet, 
So I'll do that. Someone also told me to cook your eggs if you're doing hard boiled eggs at, on a steam setting. So you could choose to do that. Okay. Um, so Can let me just. I haven't done quinoa yet, okay. but again, you know, they have some pretty basic recipes that you could be following, okay. and that would help you. Mm -hmm. And there's so many resources too. I always compare at least two or three okay. before I go forward with it. Um, so we talked about steam, soup, yogurt, the slow cook. Okay, so you can do your crock pot cooking in here. That's the only other time outside of sauteing that you don't use this lid. You could use this lid, but you could also use, if you have a glass lid that will fit on this, you can use that for slow cooking because it doesn't need to seal in the, um, it doesn't cr come to pressure. So you could use any lid that you want on top of it. Yeah. You could do slow cooking in here, so for what reason? You could get rid of your slow cooker. Yeah, but just remember this, it doesn't cook the same way because remember it heats from the bottom. So it just, it just heats differently and the settings are somewhat different and she explains it here. She says, there are a lot of discussions as to whether or not an instant pot can slow cook as well as a slow cooker does. My personal experience suggests that it can with one caveat. Forget everything you know about settings on a slow cooker because the instant pot has settings of its own. So, um, again, read your instructions. So low on an Instant Pot equals keep warm on a regular slow cooker. Medium on an Instant Pot equals low. And high on an Instant Pot equals high on the regular slow cooker. So. Did you ever need a brisket to one of these? I have. And how does it come out? I, I, I think sometimes things some meats just come out drier than you would expect. I, I have to do it again because I could have just been using a bad recipe. That's, that's a problem too, and I find that with a lot of things. You could just not have a great recipe. So, but I keep reading from a lot of things that it's the best way to cook a brisket because it does keep the moisture in. Um, so, you know, give, give that a try. Um, Oh, the other thing that this is really good at is, is this still? Keeping it warm, I think. Oh, does anyone know how long we've been doing that for? By any chance? God, you guys are no help. <laughs> about five minutes. We'll go with the five minutes. Okay, good. All right. And we still have um, nine minutes to go on here. All right, so... Um, Oh, I just lost my train of thought. What was I going to say? Oh, reheating food. So I used to work in Westford at Riverbend and Company, which is a high-end um, appliance store. If you need appliances, by the way, these people know really what they're doing. They're so fantastic. Um, and um, they sell Mila, and um, they sell a steam oven which I have always wished I had because reheating of leftovers in a steam environment is so good. It, the flavor is amazing. The steam and um, the, the moisture revitalizes the, um, not only the main course, but also the, um, the seasonings in it, right? Well, here you are. You have that capacity in this. So if I had, say, a leftover pork roast, um, I could put it in a, in a container with a little bit of water in the bottom. Of course, water in the bottom here, a cup in here, and maybe drizzle some olive oil on top and put it in here for the amount that they recommend to reheat, and that will reheat that pork with moisture and the flavor will be just as good as it was when you first cooked it. Okay, so yeah. I'm sorry? Oh, no, 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 no. So I received one of these as a present recently. Oh, okay. I was told to go to this class. Oh, good. well, 
So far, so good. <laughs> um, I have no experience with the pressure cooker either. So good. Uh, yeah. I have the last one. Oh, you? Did, oh, is it just two of you at home? Uh, we have two children. Okay, good. So my husband said, "Well, you know." So yeah. The one part I followed everything that you've said, and maybe this will just come in in a few minutes. The valve I find very confusing. Yes. Or I get intimidated by yes. it. Yes. I'm going to burn myself yep. and my kids. So yep. I mean, if you're going to talk about that, I'll just wait. I didn't. Oh no, I no. Thank you for it. mentioning it. Okay, so there's everything that you are feel fearful of. I bet you everybody in this room is feeling the same way, okay? So the thing is, is it is very scary. So if you recall, I, I think as I explained at the beginning, it, it's kind of making a noise and you're not really sure what it is. So what we're trying to do is get it to pressure. Once it reaches pressure, now you can see they're all completely silent. Those little valves, that pink one that I showed you, they're up completely. They're completely sealed right now. So what does that mean? They're at high pressure. You cannot physically open this. Your kids cannot walk up to this and open this. All right? Um, if you really want, I mean, sure, you could if you really, really pressed it. But then there'd be a problem. But there are all kinds of things that will stop that from happening. Now, when I stand in front of this, notice that the pressure release valves are at the back of the appliance. So again, your kids cannot walk up here. They have to reach around the back. So here's some advice I tell people. Number one, I keep these on my stove. I put a pan on the back of the back burner and I put this on that. So now it's further back. And it's under the hood, so when I do release the valve, it doesn't damage my cabinetry. It's an appliance, an extra appliance, so we most likely will think, oh, I'll just put it on the counter. Don't do that. Put it on the stove, underneath the vent. The steam will go up underneath the vent. For you now, they're f it's further away from the kids. Okay, how old are, you, how old are your kids? Nine and ten. Okay. But I'm not too much concerned about that, but my husband will try to reduce the pressure manually, too. So yeah, when, okay, good. So <laughs> when does he, when should he do that? Okay, so you're going to see now we're, uh, okay, so it's time to open this one. Okay, so remember, here's what's happened. We heated this up. It reached high pressure. It sealed itself off. It been, it's been, it was cooking at high pressure for 45 minutes. And then we went to the natural release, meaning I, it, I, didn't, I haven't touched it in 10 minutes, and it's already been naturally releasing the pressure. But there's probably still some steam in here, some pressure, okay? Because I can't open this. So now I have to, like your husband, I have to release what pressure is left in here because I still got to get the beans out. So what you do is you take a, your tongs, you take this, and... You put it to exhaust now. So is that something you would just know as a chef? You need to do that before nope. You your instructions will tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Th these things, they're not going to. So here, if we read my, the last here, cook at high pressure for 15 minutes and allow to release pressure naturally for 10 minutes. Release all remaining pressure. Okay. Wooden spoon handles go to. Huh? Wooden spoon handle. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you know, people take a pot lid, a lid and they kind of block it off. But what I want you to remember is, again, on, it's more so on these guys. Whoops, did you see that? Did you see me jump like crazy? That's still high pressure. Yeah. Okay. This one is done. Okay, here. Now, it's a vegetable, remember? So we need to quick release. So now, I've got to re release this. That did not release naturally at all. But I got to get this out of here because it's a vegetable. So that is going to be much more, um, more steam coming out than this one because this has been sitting for 10 minutes very quietly releasing the pressure <coughs> without you even noticing. This is quick release for vegetables. So now here's something. You have this one, right? 
there's a lot more stuff in here. So it may take longer, number one, to get up to pressure, but number two, to release that pressure because there's a lot of, you know, steam in, built up in this guy. So this could take longer. So that's why you, you know, maybe it seems like it's much longer. It's just you're using, you're also using a larger thing. This also, I can double recipes in either one of these. You can only fill this up two thirds and there is a maximum fill line on the inside of the pot that will tell you. So again, if you want to double your recipes, just know that there is a line in here that it says don't put any more ingredients in than this because it will not reach high pressure if there's too much in there. Okay? And you're able to double recipes in that one. I have. Yes. You, you will have no, no problem doubling recipes for sure. And in this one, you could even triple them. Okay. I thought I would be doubling recipes for my demonstrations, but I find that, so for you guys for today, I just added a little bit more spices and a little bit more chicken. You know, you're going to get the same great flavor, but I didn't double everything. I could have. I just didn't. I, a lot of times I'll kind of look at the room and see who showed up, and then I can gauge what I need to add. Okay, who's... Okay, so this one now is... Uh, done cooking at high pressure. You see it says, this is your pot, so this is what it's going to say. Low. Now you're going to notice it's going to start to count up. It's nat it, I'm letting it release naturally. I'm not going to hit this. And you'll notice it'll start counting up. When it reaches 10, then we'll release it. That's the 10 minutes natural. Okay, so now we've released this, and now I need to get it out of here. Because the pressure is all released, I can open it. But you can hear that lovely sound. Always open away from your face and let it sit up like this. This is the greatest thing is it's got these little, yeah, I know. I didn't know it either till somebody in my first class showed me. I learned a lot in my first class. Believe me, I thought, oh, I'll just come in and I'll do one thing in each pot. And, I had some amazing cooks in that class who had been using it for what, quite a while. So they were, you know, helping me and giving me lots of good advice. And the next, and it was for the Townsend Library. So not only did I, I had the, my very first class with them, but they filled up that class within 10 minutes of putting it online. So she signed up for a second one. And the very next week I went back and it was a very different class for that group. Okay, so here are my beans. All cooked beautifully. All right. And the great thing about beans is they're pretty forgiving. So we can just let that sit here. Now we have our um, cauliflower. So did that, did we get some... It looked like there was a lot right there that you were like, oh, got it, got it, got it. Because, yeah, it is, um, it's a very, it can be very intimidating. Just be glad he bought you this and not the stovetop one. But my question is, is where is he? <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing, you know, my husband is fascinated by it. And I'm like, exactly. you can do it. It's so easy. It's so easy. So. Yeah, just put it on a, a pizza tray or a, a, a cookie, cookie sheet. sheet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't turn the stove on. Yeah. When you put the carrots in here and you say you wrap them in foil, are you wrapping them tightly? Or in other words, is the steam cooking it, where if you wrap it tightly, the steam will penetrate? Or is it the increased heat over I think the, the increased heat. So um, you wrap them tightly. I did. And then, of course, the sugars and the water that's in the carrots, that's really what intensifies the flavor of the carrot. Because carrots are so naturally sweet and flavorful. Have you cooked beets in here? Not yet, no. But that would be fantastic yeah. too. Yeah. So, okay, so you see our cauliflower here. Came right out.
And you can save this and use it over and over again. This is going to be my emergency sling. <laughs> now, I'll have it for the next time. OK, now. Now I left the core in, so the core is going to be, you know, the, the least. I can see that the, it, I could have cooked it for another minute, but I just think it's, you're going to be ha very happy with this. So what I'm doing now, and didn't I save myself a lot of time by not cutting it into the florets? I mean, you could make it real pretty, but um, it just is so easy. So I'm just going to cut it into bite-sized pieces for you all. I mean, if we were doing my herbs and edible flower class, I'd have flowers and all kinds of things. I actually made um, a wonderful chicken last night. I didn't, I wasn't using this, but um, I did make my cauliflower rice. Have you all been doing? Okay, so let me just tell you this. We, we are all so crazy. So remember when kale was really in? This is the best part of the meal. <laughs> I am telling you, when I cook eggs in the morning, I cook two eggs in two tablespoons of butter and put cheese on them and eat bacon. No carbs. No carbs. And that's what I'm energized. And in fact, I'm not, I don't eat, I've been able to stop eating breakfast now, so that's my lunch, really. And then I had dinner at about 3.30 this afternoon. That'll be it. And you won't eat again until tomorrow lunchtime? That's right. What? <laughs> so let me just, let me tell you this. So if you had dinner at 7 o'clock and you woke up in the morning and you didn't have lunch or breakfast until 9, you have fasted for 14 hours. So you've given your body the opportunity to say, you know what, I didn't get any carbs, so I don't have to work through the carbs now. What I'm going to start doing is eating the fat over here. And that's what happens. It's really exciting. I, like I said, I did give you the information on the bottom of this of my favorite low-carb sites and a podcast that if anyone's interested, it's just amazing. But it's helped with inflammation. My husband is now, um, he, used to, he loves to run but was struggling with it. And he's now running regularly now. He hasn't in years. And he's running. And he, you know, lost the 15 pounds that was bugging him. And now he's just so much happier and healthier. And we sleep better at night. You lose a lot of weight when you sleep. Uh, that was new to me. I had no idea that that was the main time when you lose weight is when you sleep. <laughs> Which is why sleep is so important. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> let's go to bed. OK, so let me just say. It's, it is time for herbs, so I'm going to pass this around. This is um, mint from the garden, so I'm going to add this in, and we're going to get the rest of this stuff going. So we're at seven minutes, so we're almost done with our chicken. Um, our um, rice is in there, and um, we've got our um, beans all set and ready to go. So I'm just going to chop this up. This is from my... Uh, cut out, fresh out from the tea garden. This is the mint that you typically buy at the grocery store. Is it or I believe it's a peppermint. Um, oh no, it's, it's a spearmint. Sorry, the peppermint is a little bit stronger. And I'll just, once that butter is melted, I'll mix it all together. And the heat from the cauliflower will um, make the mint very aromatic. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. OK. Uh, and then we've got our beans. And I'm just going to um, take out my um, bay leaf.
just... So beans are kind of carbs. Are you talking more about simple carbs and, and wheat carbs? Well, if, you, if you're just really interested in, I just want to cut out as many carbs as I can. Um, you're right. You, you want to stay away from the um, um, processed carbs and uh, the... Um, the word just escaped me. Um, complex carbs. So if you can cut out as often as you can uh, bread, you know, you, you, you need to stop eating desserts, eat fruit, right? And then you can go even lower on carbs. There are other, you know, you can continue on down. But just making a small change, the average diet in a day, we have 270 carbs. I'm trying to keep it at about 20. It takes a while to change your taste buds. That's the problem. It takes that for anything. If you want to learn, to, if you need to cut down on sodium, you need to change your taste buds. They need to adapt, and you need to find ways to satisfy. So here's the thing that I'm learning is that when we eat a lot of sugar, it makes us hungry. Have you ever been thirsty and then down to soda, and you're like, oh, I'm still thirsty? It never satisfies all that sugar. So sugar is very inflammatory. So it will, if you have arthritis, it'll make it worse. If you're somebody who um, um, has joint issues, it'll make it worse. If you have an inflammatory um, disease or something, it, it can make that worse. So if you can cut that out, it's going to be healthier for you. So, um, and the, the beautiful thing about it is that it's free, right? It costs you less to not bring that stuff home. So, um, so you just make changes. So because I don't have the sugar, but I'm having fat, I eat less because I'm more satisfied, right? Um, fat is satis it satisfies. I worked in restaurants for a long time. So how did we finish pasta dishes or sauces? We always finished them with butter because it, get, it makes you hap satisfied, you're, you're craving it, you feel um, satiated is the word I, I'm looking for. So yes? My sister started the, the low carb diet several years ago. And we'd go out to lunch and I would watch her eat bacon and cheese and all this, and her cholesterol level dropped yes. dramatically. It does. It, eating everything that says you shouldn't be eating. Well, because they are now, um, Re go to the information that I gave you. Um, they are proving that cholesterol is not connected to, Cheese, yeah, all of that. And we know that now. They're telling us. They're actually telling us now. Right, right. But if you're a type 2 diabetic, um, look, the one thing I'm learning now is that it is not my fault that I got fat. I did everything I was told to do. I ate low fat, I exercised like crazy, I did everything I was supposed to do, and I still put on the weight. And it was when I was like, none of this makes sense. And I started hearing more and more about low carb and ketogenics, and, and then I was like, now I'm angry. I'm angry. And everybody has a right to be angry. Because what I'm discovering is that a lot of this was all very... Uh, driven by the doctors who were getting personal political gain out of promoting this lifestyle. So, whoops. Okay. All right, so now we're done. Canceling. We have to release the last of our pressure, right? So we did a natural release. So now we have to release the rest. All right, and you would be standing in front of this so you wouldn't get it in the face. But you see, naturally, it tips back, just so you know. So you want to be careful of that. We have this all seasoned up. Um, we have our beans, and then we're going to take out our rice. Yes. Because I don't know if you noticed, it said L O twelve. So that told me that it was on low, and it had been going naturally releasing for twelve minutes. It says it in your recipe. Yeah, yeah. So it will tell you, most times when it says natural release, it's for about 10 minutes. That's kind of a standard. Yeah, but if you let it go for 15, it doesn't really matter. However, 
With this, if I had let that go, it would have mattered. It would have overcooked it. Yeah. You're welcome. I'm going to use the last of this butter and the rice. So this book also, it is a low-carb, ketogenic cookbook, so it happens to be both. So I told you her website is Two Sleevers. Turns out both she and her husband had the sleeve operation. Oh, the gastric bypass. The gastric bypass. Oh. She has an autoimmune disorder, and it really <coughs> helped her. And um, But... It's kind of a combination because they had the sleeve operation. But um, I'm reading these websites I gave you and I'm listening to the podcast and so many people who are pre-diabetic or di have type 2 diabetes within a very short period of time of being on the low carb, they're either to, able to either reduce their medication dramatically or go completely off with the assistance of a doctor. But as it turns out, a lot of doctors are very... Um, hesitant. You need to find someone who's listening to you. You know, but I have a I have a lovely friend who, you know, she struggled for years with her type two diabetes. She went on to insulin and then found a medication that goes off. And what happens is they're giving you medication so that you can process the sugar. Well what if you didn't have the sugar at all? Would you need to process it? No. So maybe that's maybe that's an answer. So I do have a class I'm doing on low carb, feasting on low carbs. So, and I'm working with somebody on a, another cookbook that will help, you know, give some of my, my recipes for that. So lots of flavor because I love flavor. But hers are great. See how long this takes with this big guy? So, yeah. But I still can't, it's still releasing, I cannot open it. And it will in just a second. And then, and then our final dishes will be revealed. Are there any other questions about the Instant Pot? How many of you, have any of you been cooking in them and have something you want to share, a, a recipe or a tip or anything? You can make popcorn in them. Yeah, I was hearing about that. Yeah, so can you describe how, that, how you do that? Well, the, the Internet's wonderful for things like this. Yeah. You have to start with a good quality popcorn. Yeah. So <coughs> ideally like an organic bag of organic popcorn um, and it's super simple it's just a little bit of coconut oil yeah and I'm trying to remember I haven't done this in a while but it's, it's quick now they have you can use any clear um, lid if you feel yes. like you're doing that because it's not under pressure it's not no, yeah no it's, it's just kind of like a wash and, and it's done its thing in a matter of minutes but so yeah. similar to the stove top because you have the saute option on here yeah. Right, that's what you're using. Okay, guys, let's see how this rice comes out. I'm curious. I mean, I've never done it not in the, in the container I had, but having said that, again, you could use almost any container. So you had a cup of water in the bottom? The so this water. was, I had two cups of rice, so I had two cups of water Inside in this little container, yeah. This is just look at that. Yay! Isn't that nice? When it all works out. That's right. And well, I think really that that's what my catering background taught me. We used to have to build kitchens in people's nasty garages, you know. So you have to think really fast and come up with really innovative ideas to do things. And then, you know, many times it just happens. You get out on a job and you're like, oh, my gosh, I forgot the dessert. I did that once. Um, and I, man... Oh, no, 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 no. I went digging into this woman's refrigerator, and I managed to pull out of nowhere a, a dessert. And I was like, wow. 
No, I don't ever want to do that again. Well, I'll tell you this. You can do a lot with heavy cream. Yeah, and that's actually one of the best things on the, on the low-carb diet is that there's the, the heavy cream, and you can make so many flavorful things with it that you don't realize. Okay, let me... Um, I travel with the kitchen, as I'm sure you can tell. So this has just butter, salt, and pepper. Now, um, the cauliflower rice I was talking about makes a really nice replacement for regular rice, too. Okay, out this comes, and then we're done. Is that basmati or just long grain? It's long grain, so I'm glad you asked that because my two sleevers lady has a great <laughs> video on rice, what rice to use, and she, it's like Indian cooking always uses basmati rice because it cooks and it still stays separate very much. There's a little stickiness to this, um, and so, but um, it tastes fine. It's just not that basmati. And besides, I bought a 10-pound bag and realized, uh, and I was like, they'll eat it. They won't complain, right? <laughs> but basmati rice is what I prefer. Okay, so let me just, I want to walk this around so you can see how much I got. Okay, so I'm just going to taste it for seasoning. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. Had a little bit extra chicken in there, but. Okay. So I'm going to invite you all to come up. Let me just clear this um, and have a sample. Um, I just want to make sure. So I, I taste everything just because I want to make sure that it has the right amount of seasoning and I like to be the first one at the trough. So, mm. See, it came out really nice with the smokiness. So I think you'll like that. So. Um, Actually, I'll put the rice first, and you can put a little of the chicken on the rice. Um, I want to thank you all for coming out in this weather. Um, you were really great. You had a lot of really good questions, so um, I appreciate that because it always makes me um, teach better if I can answer um, those questions. And um, I want to thank you for putting up with my little bit of forgetfulness this evening and I hope that I have the opportunity to return and please feel free to pass my information along to any group or organization that you have that needs a speaker. I'm happy to um, travel and as you can see I set everything up and I'm even going to the Cape this summer so I go everywhere. So thank you all and don't forget come to my open garden. You are welcome to come. There's no charge on June 24th. Yes, it is. All right, so just come down this way, and the recipes are here if you haven't gotten them yet. And thank you all so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.